Let me tell you about Erie. Erie, Pennsylvania. It's called that for a reason. I've been there once by accident. I had intended to go and visit my cousin what live in the Bermuda Triangle. And I got there and found myself in Erie. Just walk right over the border and there I am, right by the lake. I was not pleased. Ain't nobody pleased to find themselves in Erie. Let's get into the etymology. The word Erie started slightly differently. It started as the word error, and then people from Philadelphia, as they do from time to time, get magnetically drawn to a place. And they was, for whatever reason, magnetically drawn to the northwestern corner of the state. Wasn't nothing there. Just end of state water. That's it. That's eerie. Or eerie. And these Philadelphia people, they say, I'm gonna go up here, I'm gonna see what's going on, I'm gonna bring a hoogie with me. And they arrived, and everything seemed wrong. Everything seemed wrong to them. It was just a little off, just a little askew. There was a lighthouse, but ain't nobody living there. There was fish, but they was walking on land. There was chickens, but they had government. You understand what I'm saying? Everything just seemed a little off about Erie at the time. So these these Philadelphians started talking about this ain't right, this ain't right, there's an error. Can't eat my hoogie where there's all these errors. So they started moving south. Where they go south? Old oh, Pittsburgh. We in Pittsburgh know how to talk. We know how to use the words properly. And they started coming down and saying all that and we said, oh, eerie, you're saying eerie, it's weird. You think it's strange. And they say, no, eerie. And we say, no, eerie. And that go on for 10 to 12 years. And then eventually, the argument started being, no, it's hoogie. And no, it's sub. And no, it's permanis. And no, we gonna put french fries on it. And then we potted as friends. Shortly thereafter, Pittsburghers started going up to Erie. They wanted to check it out. They wanted to see this weird phantom lighthouse and the government chickens for themselves. Well, they agreed. It was real strange. It was real strange. You can't get to Erie by normal means. You can't just get in a, a, a vehicle and drive north until you get there. You can't get in a plane and fly to Erie at all. As soon as you get above a certain altitude, Erie no longer exists. You gotta get in your car and you gotta drive west for about half an hour, and then you gotta turn around like you gonna go home, but you know you ain't going home. You gotta hold that in your heart. I know I'm driving, I'm driving towards my house, but I ain't gonna arrive home. You need to divorce yourself from the concept of having a home and having belonging. In one piece of your mind, you know what's there, and in the other piece of your mind, you real scared because it's not there. And you gotta convince yourself, and if you convince yourself of that hard enough, then you get up to Erie. You stop at Tim Hortons, you have some donuts, coffee, and a sandwich. You go over to uh, to the to the Lake Erie that's real cold, and you think, I'm going to go for a swim. But it's real cold, and you just notice half a dead rat. And it ain't the good half. It's the bottom half. And you think, look at that stingray. Oh, shit. And so you turn around and go on home, because now you're free to have a home. Erie don't actually exist. Erie is a state of mind in a broken, filthy mind. Ha <laughs> <laughs>